Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight we are talking about how to think differently, or is it different thinking? And with our guest, Gavin Simonovitz. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, the show where we explore what is possible in the world today. With you, our, our guests, and uh, can we start that again? <laughs> Even though this is <laughs> yeah, live, live show. Live show. I'm having a, one of those go. days. So welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, the show where we explore what's possible in the world with you, our listeners and viewers, and an interesting guest every, every week. With me, I'm, I'm Talana Simpson, your host, and I've also got... Chris Dykes, my co-host in the studio with me. Good evening, everybody. And we have our guest, Gavin Simonov Simonovitz. <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> you got it. I'm good with <laughs> Also, well, welcome. It's lovely having you here. We are going to be talking about different thinking. Or is it thinking differently? Well, perhaps something to chat about a bit later. And, and what is the difference between the two? Yeah, because we hear so much about people that think, talking about you need to think out of the box, you need to do something different. And what we wanted to talk about tonight, especially with you, Gavin, being an innovator and the way you come up with new business ideas and, and just innovate around ideas in general, was just that whole, whole concept about thinking out of the box. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm so sick and tired of hearing about people talking about getting out of their rut but nothing ever really happens. Uh, you know, keep on doing the same things again and again and again. So what's there to do differently? How can we, uh, how can we actually start to manifest real change? So maybe just to, to get the discussion going with, with you, Gavin, is just what do we actually mean when we talk about different thinking? What do you understand it as? Well, different thinking is really about getting different perspectives on a problem. So it's not, uh, you know, thinking differently about being contrarian, about having a different view on something specifically because um, you want to be set apart from the crowd. Thinking differently is about bringing a unique perspective to a problem and thinking about things differently uh, that people maybe haven't thought about before and, more importantly, solving problems in ways that, haven't, that people haven't solved it before. So, Gavin... Why, I mean, obviously looking at solving, solving problems, but, but what, what does this mean in real terms? Why is this such an exciting, exciting concept? It's exciting because if you look at the world around us, there are so many problems to solve. I mean, there's no shortage of it. Sure. Um, and what it really needs is people who firstly have ideas to solve those problems, and then secondly to actually go about uh, implementing those ideas and making change. But it's all very well having the plans. You need to have a proper plan that's well thought through where you've thought through the consequences, where you've assessed all the different risks and opportunities around that, and that's really what thinking differently is about, and that's what makes it exciting. Okay. So we were having a discussion before the show around different thinking, and a lot of it sounded to me like it was just really positive thinking. Uh, no, they, where, no, there must be a solution to this. So, absolutely. So let's, you know, if let's we think just, well and we think positively, we're gonna, we'll come up with a solution. Absolutely. Yeah. So the the lovey-dovey stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think the difference between positive thinking and thinking differently is an attitude versus a way of seeing the world. So positive thinking is an attitude. It's about saying, I'm going to be optimistic about things. I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to be positive about things. And obviously, that's got a, a really important place. But thinking differently is really about looking at the world differently. It's about looking at the problems. And instead of getting frustrated about them, it's saying, how can I solve this? Let me embrace the problems because within every problem is an opportunity. And it's about saying, where's the opportunity in this? How can I solve this particular problem? Because if I'm experiencing it as a problem and I've got a solution, then chances are there's a lot of other people that are as well. Um, mm. And that's where the real innovation comes in. It's about saying, let me embrace the problems that I'm experiencing on a daily basis because that's where the real opportunities are lying. There's, and there's another term there that gets thrown around there is solution thinking. Yeah. So is, is that what we're talking about then? It is solution thinking, um, very much so. So, so solutions or solutions focused thinking is, is sort of how I like to look at it, where you say, um, you know, one of the favorite sayings that I have with my little six year old, uh, uh, my seven year old son and six year old daughter is to say, make a plan. So mm. they come to me all the time and they go, uh, Daddy, help me with this, help me with that. And, and the first thing I say is, Well, have you tried? Make a plan first. 
And uh, once they've tried and I've seen that, they, that it's not working, then I'll step in and, and try help them. And I wish we could do more of that in our businesses because, mm. you know, very often when you speak to a manager and or people come to manager with problems, they'll say, I've got this particular problem in, in my job. What can I do about it? And the manager, because they, the manager will step in and say, well, this is how I think you should solve it and we'll give them the solution. Whereas if management would actually step back sometimes and say, hang on a sec, um, I'm not going to give you the answer. I want you to make a plan first, come up with your own solution, um, then we would see a lot of different thinking. Because what, what happens then is people tap into their own unique knowledge, worldview, culture, experience, and very often come up with completely different ideas to what the management sees from his particular position. And that's really what solutions-focused thinking is about. It's saying, let's not automatically give our own solution. Let's actually create a space for different people to contribute their own ideas and, and give them the freedom um, to explore their particular worldview and how they would go about solving solutions and see what you can take out of that that's practical and applicable and actually make it work. So, so I'm going to be very excited then about if you have a, like a diverse of people in that team, if, if they have a way of managing their diversity, but surely they can come up with some really interesting solutions then Absolutely. from all their different perspectives Absolutely. versus just one person from, as you say, the manager's perspective will be very different from. Absolutely. You know, diversity is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it can be quite destructive because you've got a lot of different people together in, in one room and there can be a clash of cultures almost. Mm. Um, but if you can harness that properly, then you can get really good thinking out of it. Because, again, what's happening is you've got different people with unique perspectives that are attacking problems from their own points of view. And when you combine those, um, often very powerful insights come out of it. One of the big problems you have in companies is that the people who hire other people tend to look for, for people that are quite similar mm, to themselves. Similar. We, we like people who are like us. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We like, exactly. And so what, what tends to happen, and very often it's unconscious. It's not a deliberate thing. It's just you in an interview. And people say things that make sense to you, that resonate with you, and you think, wow, I'll, I'll get this guy. And make he you feel me. better Makes about you yourself better. because exactly. they're, they're validating who you are. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And yet the people who very often add the most value are the ones that you don't quite gel with in the interview. Mm. And those are the ones that people should really look at hiring uh, because they bring that extra unique perspective into the room. Okay, cool. So just, um, just to clarify something we were talking earlier about um, positive thinking, so ultimately, you can be the grumpier so-and-so in the business, and you can really be a pain in the ass, but you can still be a different thinker, per se. Is that a, would that be a fair thing to say? Yes. It's, yeah. just, it's not about your temperament. It's more just the way you think. Exactly. It's about personality as well. But, mm. you know, you must understand that, that you know, coming up with ideas is only half the, half the solution. Actually implementing them is the other half. Absolutely. Now, if you're a real um, <laughs> grumpy <laughs> old whatever, <laughs> as you would say, um, it's going to be difficult to, to sort of harness the resources behind you and get people excited about your ideas and excited about implementing them and making them happen. Whereas, um, you know, this is where some, some of the emotional intelligence comes in. If you can sort of get people excited about your ideas, motivate them, um, get them passionate about um, the same way that you do, you've got a much better chance of actually making it happen. Mm. So yeah. I quite like the idea of, of labeling myself as a, as a, different, as a different thinker. But we've, we've used the terms sort of all over the place, different thinking as opposed to thinking differently. Yeah. Is there a difference between, between the two, and, and how would that manifest? I think there's a difference. Um, a diff people who like to label themselves as different thinkers tend to do it almost as a, as a stance. They sort mm. of try and almost be contrarian about everything. And that's not always that useful or productive. Because if someone is being thinking or being different for the sake of being different, uh, very often the, the, the ideas that come forth are not coming from a, a true place of inspiration, if you will. Mm. Whereas yeah, thinking can, differently... So it can just be quite yeah. difficult then to work with a person like exactly. that because they, they, they're almost trying to be difficult. Mm. Exactly. exactly. Never That's mind being different, right. but by being different, they, yes. And in fact, what often happens is those people tend to isolate themselves within a corporate environment and uh, people label, themselves, label them as being difficult to work with. Mm. Um, very often it, they don't get promoted as much as they should because again people think well uh, he's difficult now you know he's eccentric we have, we have, now we have to work with this he's always disruptive he's, he's sort of being an obstacle um, to everything that we say and that's not always that helpful and in fact there's evidence even um, that those people don't progress as far up the corporate ladder as, as they perhaps should 
Whereas thinking differently is really saying there's a time and a place for having a different perspective. Mm. Uh, it shouldn't be applied with everything. It should be applied when there's a, in a particular situation where there's a particular problem that needs to be solved and does need a unique perspective or does mm. need someone to almost act as devil's advocate and, and, and push the buttons that need to be pushed, but not in every situation. It's very situation specific. And I think that's where thinking differently can add a lot of value within a, a management structure uh, rather than, than being a, a specific personality style. So, so it's almost like seeing it more as a skill that you can use, you know, t- something in, in your tool bag, a tool that you can bring out at a specific time for, for exactly. the obstacle versus an identity. That's exactly right, yeah. Uh, you know, most of management decisions on a daily basis don't need uh, different thinking, don't need sort of big ideas. It's just the basics that need to get done um, perhaps a little bit better every time, but then every now and then there are those big decisions aligned with the corporate strategy that, that, that does need a bit of a different thinking. And as you say, it's about pulling it out when necessary and applying those tools on a, on a, on a basis when it, when it adds the most value. So we, yeah. when you, you've, you've started a company called Feedback Rocket. Correct. And we were talking about uh, you know, how this became a reality as a result of this process. Could you maybe take us through that and how, and how this actually became a, a reality and how it manifested for you? Right. So this goes back to the whole idea of, of experiencing a problem in your daily life and saying, well, how would I go about solving it? And when you come up with a solution, thinking how would that apply more broadly? So we, uh, we used to run a 360-degree um, survey system. At, uh, I used to work at one of the big banks, and it was done manually. We would do it in spreadsheets. It would be sent out to the HR manager and she would then collate um, all the feedback and send it out to the managers. So for those who don't know what a 360 is, it's really just a, um, it's a, it's a survey where employees rate their manager on a number of different behaviors or competencies, gives them advice about what they're doing good at, what they're not doing good at, et cetera. And so then hopefully it gets used to, to make positive change within the business exactly. and help people to improve themselves. Exactly, that's correct. So what happened is uh, one of the managers, in fact, got the feedback, it was anonymous. He started going through the comments and he reached one particular comment that he got uh, a, a bit upset mm-hmm. about. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. <laughs> but he didn't know who it was because it had been anonymized. So he marched off to the HR manager's office and he said to her, um, I want to know who said this because I don't believe it. This is rubbish. I never do this. So, and so on and so on. And she put up hands and said, sorry, I, I can't help you because that would mm-hmm. breach confidentiality, as she should. Um, and he mm-hmm. said, well, I don't actually care because I pay your salary. You report to me. If you want your job tomorrow, mm-hmm. then you will tell me who said this. Absolutely. If I'm the boss and when I want your opinion, I will give it to you. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, and of course, that's why he got that type of feedback <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> of course. Um, and then what happened is uh, she told him who it was. Turned out it was his PA. He went marching off, confronted her and said, how could you say this about me? This is nonsense. I don't do this. Da, 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 da. And she was just completely uh, like a deer caught in the headlights. She didn't know what happened. She went, mm. oh, well, I, I thought this was anonymous. What's going on here? How did you know it was me? Um, she burst out crying. She actually left the business about a week later because uh, um, she was just so distraught about it. And the whole trust in the system had been completely shattered. Mm. In fact, we didn't run another 360 for three years after that because, wow. because people no, remembered that particular incident. You can't yeah. trust it. Exactly. You can't trust the system at all. Exactly. So what I did, I said, wow. I mean, I sort of looked at all this from afar and I said, that didn't go well at all. I mean, I understand the need for the manager to follow up and, and you know, interrogate the feedback. But at the same time, you absolutely need to protect the identity of, of the employee concerned. Mm. Um, and in fact, this is a problem that, that's plagued the 360 degree industry for probably the last mm. 20 years. And it's a global issue. And it's a global issue, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so there's the problem that you're talking about. Sure. So I went away and I, I gave it some thought um, about how I would solve it. And there's another story behind the inspiration behind um, how that solution came about. But ultimately, we, I put in place a, a solution that uses online technology to solve that particular problem, to say, well, Let's enable the manager to have that follow-up conversation, but at the same time protect the identity of the employee so that they can, he can have that important uh, conversation that would never happen face-to-face. Okay, so the so, benefit for you ultimately was that through this process, you were able to then create and set up a business, which is obviously starting to, to, to represent a revenue stream for you. It's an exciting offer. Um, and I'm pretty sure that there's examples of where we'd be able to apply the same kind of methodology in our personal lives to, exactly. to fix issues. Exactly. So, so the key is to really say, the next time that in your daily life you experience a particular problem mm. that causes you frustration, that causes you irritation, that is a pain point, whatever it happens to be, instead mm. of getting 
frustrated about it, which is the natural reaction, you should get excited about it because Absolutely. that's where an opportunity lies. Because if, okay. if there's a problem there, what is the pain? How can I go about solving it? And it doesn't always have to be a brilliant solution. It doesn't always have to be a unique technology solution that requires a lot of development. Sometimes the best ideas are the simplest ideas, but people just haven't really thought about it yet. Okay, so why don't we think differently? And uh, my another question I was going to ask, so it okay. might be similar Sorry. to that. So if, if we're not thinking differently, what are we doing? Currently, reacting. so we just react and so and then we just get s we're still stuck with the problem. Exactly. So using that situation, when we have these little pain points that happen every day, we get frustrated about. Oh, we throw up our we throw up our arms in despair and disgust, and and we maybe comment to our friend and we move on. Watch TV. And we watch TV <laughs> exactly. Or we like to stew. People like to stew in their frustration, or they like to have their particular agendas or their axes to grind. Mm. Um, and and so and so there isn't that sort of opportunity seeking behavior to say, well, let me actually embrace the problems and, and see what I can do about it. And the second reason we don't think differently is because there's no real incentive to. Uh, no one rewards people for thinking differently. In fact, amazingly, in companies, very few people are rewarded for mm -hmm. coming up with new ideas. In fact, very often, it's, it's the opposite. People say, well, I've come up with an idea. Now it actually needs work to be done. And that means um, pulling resources away from other places. That means um, using up management time and meeting time that, that should be applied in the, the normal workings of the mm -hmm. business. And there are no natural incentives for thinking differently within companies. I guess especially if um, the, th the process of thinking differently results in a waste of time because the idea might not work. Exactly. And, uh, and so then you get seen to be um, causing a, a bottleneck or, or contributing to the problem. Exactly. That's exactly right. And the reality with innovation is that not every idea is going to work. And in fact, most ideas are not going to work. Mm. And, and people have to accept that as part of the process, that the only way you're going to get winners is to get lots of losers along the way. And unless you give people the freedom to explore and contribute, that's never going to happen. Mm. Another reason why we don't think differently is because people are so focused on the tasks that they're given every day. You know, we, we don't have a lot of time. We've got a thousand mm -hmm. things to do every day. Um, and that's what we're paid to do. So we have to actually buckle down, get the stuff done so that we can get home, we can leave the office at 5 o'clock and, and move on. Um, mm -hmm. And so to actually sort of stop that and step back and say, well, I'm actually going to now think differently about the problem and let me explore other solutions and how else could I achieve this particular aim and why am I actually doing this in the first place? Mm -hmm. uh, people don't do that because you just you get so stuck into your rut, so stuck into your particular workplace the routine. Race. Going on. The rat race, exactly, that you don't actually... The frenzy. Have, the friends, you don't have the luxury to step back mm. and stop and just so, sort of take a, a, a high-level view. Okay. Is there also an element of it, though, because in the quote, I love this quote, Albert Einstein, I think he said that you can't solve a problem with the same thinking that created it. So often I find, like, you know, I'm so stuck in what I'm doing, I, I just I can't see the, any other way out from... In, you know, just what I'm doing. But someone else might come to me and say, hey, but did you see that little thing there? And that if you click that switch, it does this. And Yeah, exactly. And in fact, ironically, the better you get at your job, the more likely you are to be entrenched in your thinking. Mm. Mm. Because you become so used to your way of doing things. And, and it's worked in the past for you because that's how you got good at your job. That it's much more difficult for you to step back and actually look at the situation in any other way. Because um, mm, it's it's like the that filter model, like we were talking about the other yeah, day. We I was telling you about I think my it was selective perception or something, yeah. some, something like that. Yeah, selective perception. We, we I've been looking at at four by fours. I want to do a trip through Africa, and Land Rovers was, was like the the way to go. Yeah. And also, and someone said to me, "What about a Jimny?" And I'd never seen a Jimny before. Now, now I see them everywhere, but they were there all all the time. I just didn't see them because I had a filter for Land Rovers. Exactly. And in fact, what you can do is turn that around to your advantage. So exactly that. Your mind tends to focus on something specific and you yes. notice it. As you say, it was there all the time. You just happen to start noticing it now because your mind was, was primed yeah, to look, to look for, it. for it. So the key is actually to prime your mind to look for solutions to problems that you have or for opportunities that you're specifically looking for. And then what tends to happen is um, when you're going about your daily business, your mind is, again, scanning everything unconsciously to sort of see what's out there. And every now and then, you'll be drawn to a particular item or a particular thing that you're going to look at or a particular news article that you're reading. And you think, oh, 
hang on a sec, that's good relevance to the problem that I'm trying to solve. I can use it in this way to solve this particular problem, and that becomes mm. really powerful. So, so is that what you mean when you, when you said priming your mind? Is that what you mean by different thinking? Yes. Is that you then start, your actual thinking process is different because you've set up a filter for it because you understand there's such a thing as mm. solution-focused Possibly you've taken the thinking. filter away. Instead of setting up this filter, you've removed it. Or it could be either, yeah. Mm. And probably very different for, for everyone because you all sure. come from, from okay, such different let's get, backgrounds. Let's get real. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we were talking all these fabulous ideas that might sound even a bit high and mighty and, and wonderful. But you know, often if we, if we take entrepreneurship as an example, we say that uh, entrepreneurs are born and not made. Would it not be true to say that this, the, the same thing is uh, the same thing about people who think differently? Uh, different thinkers are born and not made. I don't think so. Different thinking is, is a choice. It's not part of your genetic makeup. Mm. So, I mean, if you look at my background, for example, I come okay. from a very analytical background. I was a straight-A student at school, very left-brained. <laughs> one um, of those. One of those. <laughs> went into actuarial science, very left-brained, very sure. risk-averse type of thing. Um, it's only when I started working in product development and being responsible for a team, bringing, coming up with new ideas around new products, that I was actually given the space to start exploring okay. the, other, the other element of, of thinking. Um, and that actually allowed for almost a blossoming of, of a creative side. Sure. Um, so I discovered it quite late in life. And I think okay. that's generally true of everyone. Everyone has the capacity. So it's a latent, it's a latent ability in effect. Absolutely. It's, it's a choice. It's a, way, it's a way of deciding to look at the world and, and how you think about it. And if okay. it's a choice, then for me, there's even a decision there. So we can say I I'm, decide to be more innovative in my thinking which sure. is part of uh, choosing yeah. it. Yes, although I'd move away from the label of innovative and creative and all that because a lot mm. of people label themselves and they say, well, you know, I'm not creative. How can I come up with innovative ideas? And so they put themselves into that particular box. Whereas if you stay away from it, you say, well, just look at the solution, look at the problems that you're experiencing on a daily basis. Whether you're a manager, whether you're an admin clerk, it doesn't really matter. Look at a particular problem you're experiencing within your business and you can choose to get frustrated about it. Or again, this is the choice now. You can choose to say, well, why am I doing this in the first place? How can I do it better? What can I do instead? And it doesn't have to be a world-changing idea. It can be one little thing that is an improvement to a particular process that you're doing that maybe saves you 10 minutes a day. But that's a way of starting to think innovatively or, or starting to think differently. It's about choosing to react to the world in a different way to how you normally do. Sure. And in that choice... The, the, the positive outcome might be a business opportunity or, or reduce stress in the, in the workplace or, or, Just or a a better solution. relationships or whatever yeah. the case may be. So, it sounds like, so one of the steps then to how we can start thinking differently is one is to choose to just ask ourselves those questions. Because that, that's what I'm hearing is, is just, it's just question you're asking a whole lot of questions. Well, why am I here? What am I doing? And from the answers to questioning ourselves, exactly we get more more information, I suppose, instead of just doing it, we're actually questioning why we're doing it, Absolutely. and that changes the filter. Exactly, um? <laughs> exactly, no, exactly. And, and even, for example, that priming that you speak about now, that filter, um, you can be active about that as well. So, you know, I spoke about just, you know, passively mm -hmm. going about your business and your mind will unconsciously look for, for things that relate to the particular problem that you have. You can be more active about it. So you can actually go out and say, uh, let me read an article, let me watch a TV program and think how does this particular program or article relate to the problem that mm. I am trying to solve. And absolutely. most of the time, there will be absolutely no connection whatsoever. It will be what you might call a complete waste of time. Absolutely. But if you do that often enough, you start developing a way of thinking about everything that you look at and saying, how does this relate? How does this relate? And you actually start doing it unconsciously. And very often, things that com come completely out of the blue, uh, this flash of insight, this you know, divine inspiration, if you will, it hits you and you think, oh, well, that's the answer to the problem. And, and it's because of the way that you've made a choice to think about it, actively um, questioning everything that, that, that you're encountering or experiencing within your daily life. So as part of the choice, you're also building the skill as you go through this process. Absolutely. And the more often you do it and the more you practice and the more you take the risk of potentially coming up with yes. ideas that may not work, yes. uh, you're, you're in effect getting better. In fact, very often where the skill comes in is your mind very quickly starts identifying where are the, the richer mm. type of things to look at Absolutely. as a fertile ground for the inspiration rather than everything. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. 
Are there any other tips that you could give then around thinking differently? I think one of, one, of the, um, one of the best questions you can ask, again, we, we, it's, all, it's all really about questions. That's about thinking differently. It's about mm. questions, mm. not That's answers. I'm picking up, yeah. Um, one of the best questions you can ask is why. Why? Now, when you kids, that's a natural question. I mean, I've got a... <laughs> why? Why? Exactly. Why? And they go on and on. <laughs> why? But why, why that? But why, why, that? why that? And eventually the ultimate answer is... Uh, go ask I told you. That. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we lose that somewhere along the way. We stop asking why. We think we know all the answers, but we don't. Mm. And in fact, if we could bring that back into our jobs every day, mm. that alone would make a huge difference. If you actually stop and think about... Let's just say tomorrow when you go to work... Every task that you do, stop and ask why. Why am I doing this particular task? What's the point of it? What mm. am I trying to achieve? And then when you, when you get the answer to that, ask another thing. Why and why and why? And mm. keep going until either you don't get a proper answer mm. or you do get a proper answer, in which case you know why you're doing it and that's fine. But if you don't get a proper answer, Absolutely. that's where an opportunity lies to change it. And you say, okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore because there's no proper reason why I'm doing it. How else... Can I do this differently? How else can I achieve the particular aim that I was trying to do in the first place? And that's really the key is to ask why, 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 and then how. How else? How else mm. can I do this to achieve that particular aim? Or stop doing it completely because it doesn't really serve a particular purpose. Sure. And I guess if you're asking the question how and you come up with a solution, you could then say, well, why am I doing the answer to how? And, and it starts to become a, a cycle. Where you, where you start closing down those ideas, which are not going to work so well, but you start to pick up, well, the reason I'm doing this is because it gives me the following benefit, uh, or it's a potential business opportunity, or it meets the following need that people have, um, or what, whatever the case might be. Absolutely, yeah. It's about, again, not every idea is going to be a great one. So mm. you think, how, how else can I do it? It doesn't mean the first thing that, that pops into your head is going to be the answer to, mm. to, you know, that's just one possibility. It's about exploring a number of opportunities around that. Well, how, okay, this is how I can do it. How else can I do it? How else can I do okay. it? How else can I do it? And then seeing which makes the most sense through a proper critical filter to say, does this actually work in the real world? Um, can this apply? Can this actually work? And, and let me try. Right. And, and that's yeah. the part you said earlier, there's two parts. So coming up with a solution and then actually implementing it. Yeah. So part of once you've got the, an idea is, can it work? How will I, you know, implement it? And then, as you say, testing it out. Exactly, yeah. Like closes the loop. And hopefully that works better than what you were doing before. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is the whole point of why we want to think differently, Absolutely. right? <laughs> and hopefully we're going to see a whole bunch and plethora of new ideas coming to market as a result of this uh, process of different thinking, right? Yeah. Hopefully, absolutely. <laughs> so, Gavin, if people want to get hold of you, what's the best way? Uh, probably the best would be by email, gavin at blockbusterinnovation.com or gavin at feedbackrocket.com um, or through the websites, either blockbusterinnovation.com, feedbackrocket.com. Great. And if you want to hear more or get to know more about Gavin, there is his whole profile on our website. You just need to go search for us. And we'd love to hear more. If you want to give us some more questions, what are your comments? What are your thoughts around thinking differently? You can just leave your questions on our Facebook page or tweet us on LT Possibility.